Welcome to Xara template tutorial lesson number 53. In this Xara Web Designer 7 Premium tutorial, we're going to be focusing on how to add a web form to your website. And basically what a web form does is it allows you to collect information from your visitors. And you can set the fields to collect whatever information that is relevant to your business or organization. Now before I get started, I do want to mention that this tutorial is being created because I had another YouTube request to make a video for web form. So if you do have a tutorial that you would like to see that I haven't currently made, be sure to send me a message and I will do my best to assist you with learning the Xara software. If you haven't already, go ahead and start a blank new document in the Xara Web Designer 7 Premium software. And once you do that, you're going to go ahead and now open up your web browser. And you can choose whichever web browser that you prefer. I have Firefox, you can use Internet Explorer, Chrome, you know, any any web browser that you have. So go to your web browser. And once you go to your web browser, go to your address bar and type in www.jotform.com and hit enter. And that's going to take you to the Jotform website. And we're going to use their system to create a web form. Now there's probably, you know, numerous systems that you could use, but for this tutorial, I'm going to use this specific system to help you learn how to add a web form. So the first thing that I'm going to do actually is I'm going to delete these two fields that you see here. Click to edit this text and the submit button. If you don't see anything on your screen, then that's great. If you do, my advice to you is select it, the object and then delete it by clicking the X button. So select it and then delete it. After you've deleted all the objects in this blank space here, well it wasn't blank before then, but once you delete all the objects that were in this space, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're under the form tools section, which is right here. If you're not under that, let's say for example you're under survey tools. If you're under survey tools, just go up to form tools and left click on it and it will show you the options for your form tools. And the first thing that we're going to do is drag in this heading. So we're going to left click and drag in this heading into our blank space. And then that's going to give us an option to add a heading. So click on the text that says click to edit this text. Click it once and then give your web form a heading. And in this case, I'm going to call it our web form. And when I'm done, I'm going to click in a background over here in a dark black space. Left click on in the black space and that will deselect that object in our web form. And you'll notice that it added a submit button because every web form has to have a submit button. So it's going to automatically add that in when you first add your first element to your web form. So once you do that, let's go ahead and go back to our form tools. And this time we're going to actually, we're not going to stay in the form tools. We're going to go to a different option. We're going to go to quick tools. And when you click on quick tools, you'll see another set of options. This time we're going to drag in full name. So let's drag that right after our, our web form header text. And so once you place that right after the, our web form text, you'll see that it creates a full name field for the first and last name. And once you do that, we're going to go back to our quick tools options. And this time we're going to select phone number and drag it to our space right after the full name. And that's going to add a form, a form field for your phone number. And if you wanted to, you could also add an email address, which most web forms do. So let's actually drag in the email address from the quick tools, put that right after the phone number. And we're going to add one more field. So let's go back to form tools. When you go back to the form tools option, you're going to look for the option that says text area. And we're going to drop that right after email. And when you add in that, I'm going to scroll down a little bit because my screen is not quite big enough to show everything. And where we added the, the text area, we're going to change the title to message. And we're going to name that message. And I'm going to click in a black area in our background to deselect that. And now we, as you can see, we have a pretty decent web form. 
that's going to allow us to collect the visitor's full name, their phone number, email, and a message. But what if you have certain information that you absolutely have to have, like for example, the email address in order to follow up with that person? Well, let's go ahead and make it a required field. When you click on, on the email field, let's go to this little icon that looks like a settings icon. It's kind of a gray uh, shape here. And you're going to left click on that. And you're going to click on show properties. And when you do that, we're going to look for the field that says required, which is right here. And we're going to left click on that text. And then it'll bring up a drop down menu. And we're going to select yes. It is required. We have to have a text field for email. You have to enter that information, is basically what it's saying. And then validation is email. If they don't enter a real email, it won't accept that form. So by default, it'll say email. So once you're done with that, uh, we're going to scroll down a little bit using our scroll bar to the right. Depending on what size your screen is, I have a pretty small screen, so I can't see the settings to close this window out. But once you scroll down, you'll see a button that says close settings. You'll left click on that, and that'll close that window. And as you can see, now we have this assertix. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it's by the email address, emphasizing that that, that, that information is required. And let's say maybe you want to make sure that they enter a message. So when you click on the message field, go to the, the settings icon or properties icon. And when you left click on that, and I got to scroll down a little bit because I can't see all the options here. Click on show properties. And we're going to again look for the required option here. And click on it and select yes. We do want that to be required. Then close settings. And now they have to send a message along with their email. The full name may not be as important, but usually you want to have the email and message. But I would probably set the full name to require too. So let's go ahead and click on settings or properties. Go to show properties. And then look for the option and click on it and set it to yes. Hit close settings. And now it's going to require the full name email and message so those fields will be, will be required at minimum the phone number can be optional so now we have a pr again a pretty decent uh, web form set up but maybe you want them to be able to send you a file so under the form tool section you would drag in file upload and that's going to allow them to send you file uploads but I'm going to change the text to upload And once I've changed the text to upload, that's pretty much going to be everything that we're going to set up in this web form. So this is a quick and easy, fast way to create a web form that you'll be able to use in XAR. And I'm going to show you how to go ahead and actually embed this into your XAR website. So let's go to the tab that says Setup and Embed. And it's like a series of three tabs here. You'll see Properties Upload set up and embed and form style but we're going to click on set up and embed and when you click on that you'll see an option up at top right above it that says embed form and you're going to click on that button embed form then you get a pop-up menu here and under the section where it says display it on your site you're going to select the first option that says embed and when you left click on that it's going to give you some code that you can place on your website. So you're going to left click in there once and it'll select all that text when you left click in there once. Hit copy and then hit close. And once you're done doing that, let's go ahead and go back to the XAR software. And in our blank workspace, we're going to go ahead and draw a quick shape. And I'm going to make it kind of big because I want to make sure that that whole web form is covered and once you draw your quick shape you're going to right click and go to web properties and look for the placeholder tab left click on that and then under the section where it says replace with HTML code for the HTML code body left click on that and then hit control V and paste that code hit OK and after you hit OK we're going to check the option that says regenerate placeholder image automatically 
and then we're going to hit the OK key. And that's going to regenerate a snapshot image of your web form. And as you can see, it created a snapshot of our web form, but it's actually kind of cut off here on the side. So what you're going to do is go to your toolbar, select the selection tool, and we're going to click on this middle node to the right and drag outward so that we can increase the width of our web form so that it'll show the full thing. And as you can see, it's no longer cut off from the right, but you don't see the submit button at the bottom. So that means that we need to stretch it vertically to make it taller so that we can see that submit button. And as you can see, we can now see the submit button and we can see our whole web form. And you can position that web form wherever you want on your website. So now that you can see the whole web form, let's go ahead and go to File, Preview Website. And as you can see, here's our web form. We can now enter a first name. And I'll just put Alex Joan Joe. And you know, you can put in a phone number, whatever phone number you want to. And we can just put in information and fill out the form. Now, that's how you create a web form. So you have to fill all those things out and hit submit. But as you can see, if I try to hit submit without filling out the required fields, it says this field is required. So you can't submit your form unless you fill out the required fields. So let's say, for example, I didn't put in the name and I erase the name and then I go to the next field. It's going to give me a warning that all these fields need to be filled out. Otherwise, you will not be able to submit your web form. So it's very important that your users fill out these fields if you set it as a requirement. So that's how you create a web form and that's how you submit it to the website. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in the web browser. It'll look the same as it does there and you'll be able to again if you make a mistake or you don't fill out everything it'll give you a warning hey this field is required and if I skip that one and go to the next one they'll say hey this field is required and when you click on the browse option it will allow you to search for a file on your computer and upload it and send it to someone but you'll notice though as I click through these different fields the submit button kind of disappears away. Well, that's because we need to make our web form a lot bigger so that it can compensate for when the form expands. So if we stretch that and make it a little bit bigger, you won't have that problem anymore. So now we got a little extra room. And if we go to File, Preview Website, and this time, let's say that I intentionally skipped some of these fields, you'll still see the submit button at the bottom so it's very important that you make sure that your your place or image in Xire is big enough to compensate for the size of your web form but I hope this this tutorial was helpful in showing you how easy it is to add a web form to your website and collect information from your visitors if you have any questions please feel free to submit a message to me on YouTube and I will do my best to answer your questions don't forget to subscribe Give us thumbs up if you like this tutorial and, you know, feel free to embed or share this information with others. I hope that you stay tuned for future tutorials. Have a great day.